how are you feeling about the tour guys yeah i really inspired i didn't i didn't know that it was this stuff. yeah i thought yeah oh. it's very interesting it is but it's also really sad like when you hear yeah. the extent like the suffering that people went through and like the torture and everything and yeah. it's a small island but it's still so it's big. big and we were just told that um many of the slaves um used to be put outside like you can see like there's buildings but many of them used to sleep outside and when i know it's alone it's like six months rain six months hot hot weather so can you imagine like sleeping just outside, outside for six months under in the chains. rain and, and it's just it's awful yeah awful. What is this? This is like a flagpole, you know. The company that will be in charge of the island at the time, at the moment, wow. will erect their flag here, and out of the British flag. Wow. Yeah. And this is a, that's a seat. That is, yes, yeah, a seat. Yeah, the seats and to bag into this course here. Yeah. very clever they know they have to grow so they allow them to come so they'll be here with their mothers the children and the, the, the women will be here yeah so after the beginning after the discussion everything the payment then they then bring the masters the, 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 the buyers the slave buyers in here yeah they call people from here and people from here yeah and i tell you i tell you that uh, make no mistake that uh, at the time of slavery here the condition of the slaves was very very terrible but what was particularly racking, torturing, tormenting, provoking, afflicting, and traumatizing is when they had to brand them on the test with red hot iron. This is the fire heat they are looking at. You know, after, after they've collected them, they called them from the two rooms. They had to brand them with the acronym RACE, Royal African Company of England. And S, which means they come from Sierra Leone. Why? These are people that they need to make money out of, yet they subject them into short indignity. Huh? They treat them, they reduce them to, to animals. They had to brand them here. And when, when once they are filled with that despondency, what happens when they take them on board the ship? Most of them lose their, lost their lives. They die. Because right on their soil, they started treating them like animals. And they don't know what will happen to them later. And I think that is not enough. And I think that is not enough. What happens? This is an account from one of the slip, the slip traders themselves, who had visited Sierra Leone three times in the 1780s. That is John Newton. John Newton was a slave master who later abandoned slavery and became an ordained Anglican priest. He has visited Sierra Leone three times. In fact, the village after Waterloo, Newton, was named after him. It is from one of his tracts, Thoughts Upon the African Slave Trade, that he wrote. There's an extract there which is very pathetic, where he said, and I quote, he said, when the women and the girls are taken on board the ship, naked, stuck naked, terrified, you know, trembling, almost, almost exhausted with cold, fatigue, and hunger, they are often also, I mean, are exposed to the wanton rudeness of white savages. They rape them in the ship. During the branding process, if you want to resist because, because of the pain you are feeling, they beat the hell out of you. These were also responsible and respectful citizens, African citizens, who have their own families, yet they are subjected, they are reduced, like animals, treated here like animals. Can you imagine that? Can you believe that? Yet they need them also to make money, to enrich themselves. So it is only, it's after everything here, after the branding everything, what happens? They now take them to where we call the door of no return. And that's the door which when once you've crossed that door, there's no coming back. Now you die on the way, you make it. There's no coming back. So pathetic. The Africans are in chains. Chains on the neck, on the hands, on the feet, everything. Can you imagine that? That is why the, 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 the traditional African thought that slavery was brought by the white man. 
No, I want to refute that also. No, there was slavery in traditional Africa. But the type of slavery brought by the white man is completely different. In Africa, in, tra in traditional Africa, slaves were not treated like that. They don't have to chain them. They don't have to beat them. And if a slave proves to be honest and loyal, he can even inherit his master's properties. But that's not, it is, it's not evident in this case. That is why the illiterate African thought that a slave was brought by the white man. Because of the, because of the, 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 what, they, what, they, what they put into it. The struggle, the suffering. And I tell you another testimony of one, of one of the ladies that visited Bones Island here in the, on the 10th February 1791. That is Anna Maria Falcombrich. He said, and I quote, he said, Involuntarily, I strolled to one of the windows a little before dinner without the smallest suspicion of what I was to see. George then, what my astonishment and feelings were at the sight of between two to three hundred wretched victims chained and partial out in circles, while the slave masters would be up there, because this was two-story house, while they'd be up there holding lavish dinner parties, the slaves are down there suffering, struggling for what to, what to eat. In a, in a way of camouflaging, right, they had to put them here because it was like a, a shelter for them, because they are ready for shipment, so they, the buyers would get attracted because they would look fresh, they would look like, a, a, I mean, uh, energetic, you know, so everybody will want to buy them. But otherwise, they will leave them. This place is the open air slave that I told you about here, where they will leave them to languish whether, they, whether rain or shine. They only bring them in here as these rooms get empty. Otherwise, they'll be there for, for years. They'll be there. And that's why they die in their waste. A lot of them die. And when they die, just throw them on the sea. They don't care about them. Yeah? So let us go now to Dove Nuriton. I showed you Dove Nuriton. Which, when once you cross that door, that's not coming back. Is it that well? If you are strong enough, you make it, or you die in the way, and then they throw you overboard. This is uh, the door of Nuriton. There are two doors actually. One for the women and the, the other for the men. They all pass here in chains, force them to pass on the gear, just to instill fear in them. And then the later join that main door there. Because if you go back, but you can't go there, but you know that there. There, they'll just go down to the beach, they walk from this zone to where the ships anchor to get to the, to, to get on board the ship. But they have to pass through here. All of them. So it's like <laughs> we of like creating adding more suffering to them. <coughs> After the branding everything, they have to put them here also. They pass through the door, walk down the beach and then go and onboard the ship. Yeah. So this door, when you cross this one, it's no coming back. No coming back. If you're lucky, you are strong, you survive. Yeah. Otherwise, then that's the end of you. You throw you overboard. They have to force them. They beat them. Yeah, this is their steps. But it's all filled now. They are like steps that you come down. Yes. If I can if I can demonstrate. It's very it's very it's very strenuous. I am free now, but in those days they were chained, can you imagine? So they had to force them. This there is filled now. It used to be like a, that's a spill actually, but it's all strenuous. For you to go down, you know, you go down by your back, you know, you go down that way. You, you go down. It's very, very, it's very, very difficult. Very difficult. I cannot do it. I just I just wonder if that is to happen today. That would, be, that, would, that would be a very serious war. <laughs> At the time, they, they cannot resist. They call all, they all, already all over your body are chains. You are in chains. So how can you fight back? Mm. You cannot. You see? So that's it. So let us continue. show you something we're going down actually oh. this is a this is the dungeon oh. yeah, yeah. Where, this man? where yeah. these guys were yeah. kept for causing problems eh. yeah they put them in here and they, they put them where the slaves they have a fun who life. were like uh, fun wanting life. to be troublesome they put them in here for three days oh without, without, without food and water so by the time right. they bring them out they've complied they were <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would comply too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you yes. serious? When I eat, it's full of bats. Put some chemical in them to hold the, 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 the stones together. Yeah. So the slaves use, they, they, they go in the sea, collect them, 
and then bring them here, grind them, and then mix with, with chemical to build the pots. So this is the cemetery that has uh, separate burial grounds. Here was for the black. And uh, the only respected black among the blacks at the time was this man called John Adams. And John Adams, he was the head of the blacks here. He had been with the white men, like the intermediary, the mediator, the middleman, like uh, arranging all the negotiations in terms of buying this place from the local people. He was like uh, the middleman. So that is why he was so respected <laughs> to the white masters. And when he died, they buried him here. The other grave you'll see there, it looks very recent, but uh, it's not. That is the second in command of two Adams. He's, he's deputy. That's Adam's deputy grave there. So <coughs> this is the the only people that are buried here. <coughs> because these are the people they have respect for. Yeah. Who, who, who became a slave and who did not have? Well, at the time, you really, they are like uh, the chiefs, the warriors, those who think they have power over their colleagues. Mm -hmm. You just attack them, you know, attack them and then capture them and bring them here. But they know at that time there were people that were looking, they were buying slaves. So bring them here, they buy them just for minor things. So the chief took advantage of that situation to infiltrate other yes. territory and yes. then take those people and then bring get rid here. of them via. Yes. Right. And some, some were sold into slavery because of witchcraft. You know, uh -huh. so yeah. Africans they say if, we, if you are part of witchcraft, they, they prefer to sell it to slavery than to continue to destroy lives. Mm. Yeah. So they sell it. To, but some they took advantage of their colleagues, like the chiefs, the warriors, who had power at the time. You know? The chief always want to like consolidate himself to the throne. They want to like no. use no. items that nobody can use like him. Mm. So, and these are the items you can only get from the island here. Like, uh, <laughs> you can remember African sandalwoods, you know, the tobacco pipes, mm. these things, silver spoons. You know, at the time in traditional Africa, you don't see these things here. So it's only like chiefs, like warriors that could have them after they sold their colleagues to so, so the, so the the locals were involved in selecting yes, who to come look to like a, there, there were tribes, there were tribes like a, three main tribes that were like a, involved into like selling the, 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 their, their products to wow. and the, the Fula, mm -hmm. Maningu and the Susu. Of course, don't forget that these these two these three tribes, they are the uh, the Islamic scholars. They brought Islam here. At the time, they have so much influence. They are starting like a, the caravan thing, like like uh, getting people to carry their luggages, you know, and when slavery like uh, came up, so they started selling them into slavery, you know, to add to their, <laughs> to their, to their, to their wealth already. Yeah. So they were mainly involved into that, those three tribes, the Fulas, the Susu, and the, the Maningus. Yeah. For us Sierra Leoneans, that uh, in as much as we embark on this path, we should always be cognizant of our history, heritage, and the circumstance that makes Sierra Leone one of the most unique places in Africa. Uh, geographically, Sierra Leone not only has uh, one of the largest natural harbors in the world, it also has uh, a little land, we call it promontory land, called Cape Serra, that is the closest point in Africa to Brazil in America. Historically, Sierra Leone is the only place in Africa that was so central to the transatlantic slave trade, and where the first free slaves were returned to in, from America yeah, in effect, completing the circle. It is the only place in the world that was that I mean that has an existing fort that was built by slaves, free slaves. And it is the only place in the world where, concurrent with creating a haven for the free slaves, it was also actively trafficking in slaves. We make Sierra Leone as a as a place for free slaves. Yet at the time, at the very time, they were also taking slaves. Also, it is the only place in Africa that has its citizens, not just of indigenous locals, but Africans from the entire slavery coast, and uh, slave trading coast. That is the Nova Scotians, the Maroons, and the liberated Africans. <coughs> yeah? So we are saying, Bones Island is an important and crucial component of one of the most atrocious periods in human history. Yeah? For which Sierra Leone needs to preserve these ruins for posterity. Not out of a macabre desire to showcase the slave trade, but because it has so much history related to the slave trade.